Okay. <clears throat> to begin with, let me thank all of you for the opportunity and your time. I'm grateful for the opportunity given me. And I would like to share my view on why we should visualize healthcare data. Okay, we're talking about the need to visualize healthcare data and why do we have to do it? On your screen, you see a table that gives us the top 10 causes of death in Ghana, in the year 2017. Here, if I ask what was the leading cause of death and which of these causes had three as percentage, I think it's going to take you a while to come up with the answers. But if we visualize this data, we're going to see as you have on your screen, that is easy and quick to get answers to those questions. From this graph, I can easily say that lower respiratory infections was the main cause of death in 2007. And then to answer question two, I can also easily say that meningitis and protein energy malnutrition were the two causes of death among the top 10 that shared three as a percentage. So what we are saying is that it's easier if we can visualize the data so that all of us will understand it and be able to make quick decisions. Right, so from this simple diagram or sim this simple image, we can justify the need for data visualization in the healthcare sector. Why are we even thinking of visualizing the data? What are the problems that we have? Now, I'm limiting this to Ghana because that's where I have the experience. As far back as 2010, reasons assigned to the poor healthcare delivery in Ghana were poor healthcare facilities, poverty, inadequate qualified personnel, uncompleted projects, deplorable road network. And I keep asking myself, why these? And these were factors that the, the then minister and some key personnel in the sector came up with. Yes, these are problems. But then we move on to 2013. And here we have a seasoned politician an expert in heart surgery who then said that among the leading causes of poor healthcare delivery in the country 
a poor data gathering system. When I say that again, poor data gathering system, error in documentation, inadequate qualified personnel, mm -hmm. lack of tertiary referral hospital. Yes, at least for now, we have somebody who is talking about data. But here we are limited to the data gathering system. So if we gather the data, what next? We gather the data, we are unable to analyze it. So what next? To address those problems, gradually, we putting up hospitals. So for me, it's still not lack of facilities, not bad rules. What you have on your screen is just one of the regional hospitals. And then the way they're storing patient records now. Now, still trying to debunk the idea of lack of facilities and the rest, healthcare is a shared responsibility. We have the private sector, we have the Christian community. They are all contributing. In fact, Christian Health Association of Ghana has about 302 health facilities, mainly in the rural areas. Every district at the moment we have 254 municipal, metropolitan, and district assemblies. And each one of these has a district hospital, in addition to other facilities in the district. So still, that is not the main problem. It's not just lack of that. Now, this is where we are. This is a health personnel who has all the data, all the patient files. But what is holding this person up? Why can't we make insightful decisions? The answer simply is that they lack the tools that will enable them to make insightful decisions. What they require at the moment is analytical and data visualization tools, not just building more hospitals, constructing rules, but even the little that we have, the data that they are turning out, what are we doing with that data? Is most of these hospitals, especially the district hospitals, have been put up just for political reasons. There's no data backing them as to why the hospital was cited at that particular place. Because we are not making use of the data, we are not analyzing it well. Our stakeholders don't know what is going on. We just put it there. Okay, so that is what we are saying. What is the real problem? For all that the people have said so far, 2010, 2013, what is the real problem? My opinion is lack of deeper understanding of the patient. Lack of deeper understanding of the patient. We have all the records, but we don't analyze them. So we don't actually understand the patient. What is wrong with the patient? Where is the patient coming from? How far is the patient traveling? If we do analyze this, then we will be able to cite facilities or post the few personnel that we have to these areas so that they can also handle the problem. Now, to understand the patient, we need to get rid of the individual silos. If you go to a facility, at the moment we're trying to put up, like the government is in the process of um, coming up with the health, electronic health record, management system. And we are hoping that once the electronic health record system is in place, it means patients' medical history will be available. So if I move from one facility, let's say I move from Accra, which is the capital, to another city in Ghana, they should have access to my history. Unlike these days that you go there, they don't have your history. So they decide what to do. They don't have your history. So continuity of care is not there, it's broken. Right. 
So we're saying we need to make use of data analytics and data visualization tools. And that leads us to, but it answers the question already, we've done that. Why visualize healthcare data? Data and subsequent insight derived from it are the engines of growth and innovation leading to better healthcare delivery. So if we are able to analyze the data, come up with these visuals, we'll be able to quickly make decisions as to what to do. Patient's data is full of stories and visualizing it will tell us how well we are doing and what needs to be done. So here, before we can actually make use of data visualization, we need to know what data is in the first place. So on your slide, we try to define what data is. And we believe that data is the value. It is the value that you assign to something according to agreed standards. Why are we saying the value assigned according to agreed standards? If you take a healthcare facility, you have different departments. So if you don't come up with standards, one department will be capturing, let's say the patient name will be capturing first name, same name. Another department will be capturing same name, first, first name, confusion. Apart from that, whereas somebody will be using uh, feet and inches to capture height and weight, somebody will be using the metric system. Likewise, temperature, will, one department will be using Celsius, another department will be using Fahrenheit. So you need to come up with all these standards so that you have the same measurement capturing the data. But if you are not able to do that, it becomes difficult to analyze the data. Right. So that is what we mean by data, but on its own, it doesn't make sense. Yes, you've captured the age, body temperature, height, weight, and the rest. It doesn't make sense. You have to apply it appropriately. For instance, when we make use of the height and weight, we will be able to compute the BMI of the patient. And that is what an information is. The, once we refine the data, once we process the data, it gives us information. An example is the BMI. Because BMI itself, we did not capture it. But rather, we use the height and weight of the patient to compute the BMI. And based on that, we'll be able to determine whether the, the, the patient is underweight, overweight, or obese. In simple terms, visualization means the development of a visual image in the human mind. So if I take you back to the explanation on overweight, normal weight, underweight, and obesity, yes, it's not, you do the computations and you're saying if the weight of the, the BMI of the person is less than 18.5, the person is underweight. And then when you have it 18.5 to 25, you say, oh, normal weight. And if it's, over, if it's 30 or over 30, the person is obese. But you write all these things, it's even difficult for people to make sense out of that. You can easily depict that with an image so that you can easily see if the patient is overweight or not. So based on that, we saying that data visualization or information visualization is the way to go to enable us provide quality health care. Right. Now here, what I have is a reporting tool that is used by one of the main partners in healthcare delivery in Ghana called the Christian Health Association of Ghana. In fact, it's the same tool that the Ghana Health Service also uses, just that it's a modified one. All 
Right. So, uh, unfortunately, I could not get access to the form, but that is fine. So over here, we have data from a facility for the first six months in the year 2017. And we're only looking at patient visits, OPD attendance. OPD attendance, old patients, new patients, January, February, up to March. Again, if we, with, this is a table, it's also a visual, but this becomes difficult. So if you can chart it, if you can put it in a graphical format, then it becomes easier to descend the pattern as to which month we're getting more people, which month we're getting new more patients. So here, I have the January, the old patients and new patients, January, February, March, up to that. So as you can see from the graph, it is only in the month of April and May that we had Right, sorry, it's uh, March and April that we had cases where new patients are more than old patients. So quickly, one may ask, what, ha what happened during the months of March and April? Are those months festival months? Do we have something special during those periods that people come into that particular catchment area? Is that why we have more new patients? Because the first time the person attends the facility, the person is a new patient. But when the person comes back, let's say the following day or a month after, that person is old patient. So for us to see this rise in March and April, we need to delve in and ask questions as to why. And these things are clear here. Unlike going back to the table here, uh, it's difficult to see clearly what this is telling us. So yes, the tables are there, but visualization makes things far easier for us. Now, so what is it that we are saying? And here I will quote Sian Ellis, who's, who once said, growth comes in stages. If you fail the first stage, you're going to fail the next stages. Everything about healthcare delivery is data. You go to the OPD, uh, the records, inpatients, lab, pharmacy, emergency, everywhere you go, we collect data about you. You're going to do a, a scan every place we create data. And the data that we are creating is such that it is drowning the healthcare facilities. They don't have the ability to analyze them. And because they are drowning in the data from all these departments, it means they are starving with knowledge. They don't, they don't, they're not making sense out of that data, let alone deriving wisdom that will push them to decide what to do in order to provide quality health care. And the answer to this is data visualization and analytical tools or data analysis, analytics and data visualization. These have the ability to assist healthcare facilities to improve patient care and reduce cost. So what are we saying? The way forward. The way forward is for us to adopt electronic health record system. If that is not possible, at least electronic medical records. The only the major problem with the electronic medical records is that 
it's limited to these facilities. So patient history becomes a problem. Going to one facility from another, you don't have your records with you. So again, the physicians are going to do try and error because they don't have any data, they don't have any data about you. Now, yes, we be going for electronic health record systems or electronic medical records systems. But so far, all that I have seen are limited. Most of them that I've seen are limited. They are limited in the sense that what we want to do is the ability to produce real-time visualizations as a patient walks in and the patient gets to the first point of contact. As long as we take data about this patient, we should have a visual indicating the number of patients who have visited the facility by gender, by age, by type of patient, if it's insurance paying, we should have graphs indicating all this. So that by the end of the day, or any point in time during the day, administrators should be able to tell us what is going on. So if, if at the imaging side, we have so many people there, they should see from wherever they are, so that they can decide quickly what to do if some of them will have to go to another facility to do their lab or whatever. That also informs them as to whether they need to buy extra equipment to augment what they have or not. So that is what we are proposing that we need to have systems that will give us operational dashboards so that it will inform management on a real time basis what needs to be done. Right. So these are the reasons we have for visualizing healthcare data. Um, let me quickly add here at least I've seen one, two that can give us real-time visualizations and that is comcare comcare by dimaji i personally use tableau for data analysis and i also use comcare for m health but tableau even though it's a good tool you must have the data before you use make use of uh, tableau you cannot use Tableau to capture the data. But Comcare is the data collection tool, a mobile data collection tool, and it has built-in features to let you draw your graphs. Right, so that is what we have. And again, I'll say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for your time. Thank you.